book lovers, it is G-Swiss here and I'm here today with my monster romance TBR. <laughs> If you didn't know, this is a 7 on Sunday topic and I am the host of 7 on Sunday. I will link the Goodreads page down in the description where you can check it out and you can participate in a topic in the future or you can suggest a topic. And this topic was definitely inspired by the season as all the topics in the month of October. I initially wanted to do like a monster romance recommendations video, but the catch is I haven't read many monster romances as of yet, so I decided last week to do a paranormal romance recommendation video. And today in terms of my TBR, I I would like to steer it in the monster romance direction. So I will be talking about the monster romances that I plan to read, some monster romances that were personally recommended to me, and some monster romances that I am just seeing praise for everywhere on the book internet. Now before I proceed, I get it. Monster romance is weird to some, but here I don't judge. So, if you have any recommendations, feel free to leave them down in the comments, but if anyone's just gonna shame people for reading monster romances, I'll probably mute you. I have mentioned this in a video previously. I recently had a conversation with a friend pretty much saying that they believe that monster romances tend to have more respectful dynamics and communication than some of the regular contemporary romances they read. And you know what? To some capacity, based on what I've read so far, they're not wrong. That's kind of what I expect from some of these, but I'm pretty sure I'm gonna get some dark and brutal rooting love interests as well in the mixture. So I guess without further ado, let's get straight into this list. I'm going to share with you guys what monster romances I currently have on my TBR. So I'm going to start off with a few that I don't physically own and then I'll move on to the book slash series I physically own. Funnily enough, I physically own majority of this TBR. So I'm really happy that I'm slowly starting to accumulate a collection, but fingers crossed to get to them sometime soon. So I'm going to start off with Lillian Lark's Monstrous Matches series or the Bathhouse series. I believe that there are two series that are kind of like linked and connected. They're kind of companion series. I have been personally recommended this series by a few friends and initially I saw the covers and I was like oh my goodness that looks so cute. Especially because I believe that whoever illustrated Katie Roberts Deal with a Demon series covers also illustrated some of the covers in this series and I could totally see that. I, I get the vibes. The covers look absolutely stunning but I'm hearing from a lot of people that the romances are absolutely wholesome and the bathhouse stories are also so cute. I personally feel like I'm gonna go into this monster romance TBR expecting to get something similar out of it from my cozy paranormal romance TBR because yeah I, I believe that these books have cozy vibes but obviously there's a monster background somewhere in there and um, there's a little bit of darkness so it's a happy medium I'd say. So I would really like to read this one. I'm just hearing great things about this series in particular and at the moment I can't really say much about Lillian Lark because I have not read anything by Lillian Lark as of yet, but one of my main goals from this TBR is to get to Lillian Lark's books sometime soon because I just hear that they're absolutely incredible. <laughs> and the next book that I've put on this TBR, I've put on this TBR because I'm very much interested in gargoyle romances and I stumbled across this title named Titan by Julian Graves and funnily enough the series is called Romancing His Stone. The play on words is hilarious, like as soon as I read it I just wanted to crack up so bad, but I'm hearing really good things about this one. I believe after reading The Crave series and being introduced to the gargoyle culture in that series, it has made me much more intrigued to read book series about gargoyles or that feature gargoyles because I'm so used to reading series that feature werewolves and vampires and other sorts of paranormal creatures, but I feel like out of the years that I've been reading, I've barely been exposed to gargoyles. So when I saw this on my recommendations, I immediately had to put it on my mental TBR. I do want to purchase this book physically eventually and I am seeing really good reviews for it. I believe that this is a debut novel from the author as well, so that's promising considering that it's receiving pretty good reviews. And I believe they also have another book called Blood Moon as well. I'm just going to put that as an honorary mention. I would like to read that one as well. Hopefully I get to that one sometime soon. I'll let you guys know how I go with it when I do. And the final book series that I've got to mention that I don't physically own, and I have not purchased as of yet, but I will be purchasing eventually. I mean, it is a seven book series, but I held off from purchasing it because the original 
original covers were just so ugly. And that is the case with majority of Tiffany Roberts backlist books. Guys, if you've ever seen the former cover for Escaping Wonderland, you would know that that is one of the most cursed covers to exist. Like, when I think about it, I'm like, oh my goodness. I cannot believe that that went to print. I'm just gonna say it right now. It was pretty much a girl and a cat mascot. And it just, yeah, no, it did not look realistic. That is why with monster romances, specifically, fan art is appreciated because, yeah, I don't really want mascots on my covers. And just letting you guys know that that is not discrimination against furries. I'm not trying to isolate the furry community at the moment. It's just with the Cheshire cat, I don't want to picture him as a mascot, if that makes sense. I want to picture him as the magical figure. Oh my goodness, I am totally getting off topic. I want to read the Kraken series by Tiffany Roberts. This is a seven book series and they've just been repackaged and these covers look so adorable and so romantic and they are giving me such cozy, wholesome vibes. And I am hearing really good things about the series as well. There are other book series that I want to read by Tiffany Roberts. Like even the next book series I'm going to mention on this list is a book series by Tiffany Roberts that I do own. But there are some other like alien series that I also want to read from them. But I am very much interested in the Kraken series because I haven't actually read much about Krakens. I don't believe I've read any monster romances that deal with Krakens. And I don't know if I've read any paranormal romances where Krakens are side characters. I could be wrong, but right now nothing comes to mind in terms of what I've read so far. So I am curious about the series. And once again, I'm hearing it has the very wholesome and entertaining vibes that a Tiffany Roberts book slash series would have. So I reckon I'm going to really love this one. And I just want to purchase these new covers because they just look so cute. And yes, speaking of Tiffany Roberts, I'm pretty sure some of you might expect me to mention that um I have the Spider's Mate on my TBR. And yeah, this is probably like the weirdest out of the bunch for some. I understand that some of my watchers are arachnophobes. I get it. But I am, I'm I'm very fascinated. Oh my goodness. This is definitely going to be like a guilty pleasure. But with Tiffany Roberts books, I think after reading Escaping Wonderland and His Darkest Cravings, I think I'm just going to completely own the fact that I love Tiffany Roberts works because those two books were incredible in my personal opinion. So I feel kind of like less guilty about this pleasure, you know? So this is fascinating to me personally because the Spider's Mate trilogy takes place, I believe, on another planet and it's another sci-fi story from Tiffany Roberts. As much as I'm a huge Huge fan of fantasy books and even though I have been struggling to get into sci-fi like only occasionally I pick up a sci-fi Tiffany Roberts is kind of like reviving that passion for me when I read Escaping Wonderland I was absolutely blown away by the sci-fi elements and I think my one gripe about Escaping Wonderland is the fact that it's a standalone and I believe that they should have expanded upon that world but I think that I'm gonna get what I wanted out of Escaping Wonderland in the Spider's Mate trilogy because it might just have those sci-fi elements that I was looking for. <laughs> it might just have the world building that I very much needed. I know that Tiffany Roberts are eventually going to do a spin-off book in this series. They've actually put that project on hold. I believe it's called The Weaver. They put it on hold because they don't feel passionate about writing it at the moment and I totally get it. I just know that as soon as I read this book series I'm probably going to want more out of the world but I totally understand where they're coming from because they can only really do so much and creative burnout is a thing. But anyway, I am jumping ahead because I still haven't even read this series yet. But it is one that I've placed on my TBR. It was one that was recommended to me alongside Escaping Wonderland. And I wanted to read Escaping Wonderland first to ease me into Tiffany Roberts. And I think that now that I've read a few books by Tiffany Roberts, I can go into this spider romance. I'll let you guys know how I go with this one. It might be a favorite or I might just find it to be too weird. We'll see. And the next monster romance book series that I've put on my TBR is is The Dusk Walker Brides by Opal Rain. Here I have A Soul to Keep. This is the first book in the Dusk Walker Bride series. And you know what's very fascinating to me, right? Abby from Abby Lee See the Book Lover. She doesn't read Monster Romance. And yet this is her favorite book of the year so far. <laughs> and that just blows me away because that is kind of how I know that I'm personally gonna like it. Because I'm already a fan of Monster Romance. I am already interested in Monster Romance. And finding out someone who I know who barely reads Monster Romance absolutely adores this book. It has made me even more interested interested in picking it up. And also these covers are like very cute. I understand that the monsters on these covers kind of like freak people out, I get it, but I don't judge. When it comes to the monsters, I do not discriminate, okay? <laughs> 
but I heard that the story is very wholesome, it's very sweet, and yeah, it does have some spice. Just a side note, I did get the signed and personalized by Opal, and I'm just so happy that I got to meet them. I think meeting them also really encouraged me and motivated me to pick the series up, but I think I'm even more motivated knowing that Abby loves this first book. So I hope to get to the Duskwalker Brides eventually. I'll see if I love it just as much as Abby. The next book series that I've put on my Monster Romance TBR is actually a book series I've already started, and that, my friends, is the Monstrous Beauty series series by Jenica Snow. This series consists of a few novellas where we are transported into this like fantasy romance world following these different fairy tale reimaginings. The first one was Beauty and the Beast, except by the end of the story the beast doesn't turn back into human, he stays beast. The hunter, I believe, follows Red Riding Hood and the wolf. And I have no idea what the third one was about again. It pretty much lives up to its name, being that they are monstrous beauties, being that these love interests are actually much nicer than the humans in this world and their romances seem to be much more wholesome. I enjoyed the Beast one. I do have to admit it was almost all smut and barely any plot but Beast was so cute. He was absolutely adorable to the belle of that story and I kind of wish that it was expanded upon a little bit more but I'm happy with what I got for the 100 page novella I read. <laughs> I'm hoping that I will really enjoy The Hunter and I'm hoping that I will enjoy the rest of the series. Jenica Snow is an author I also want to read other books from as well. I really want to read their Hades and Persephone reimagining. And I hear that there are other book series that are popular from them that are very much loved in the book community. So I'm hoping to get to them eventually, but right now I believe that this series, the Monstrous Beauty series, is a good introduction to their work. And the next monster romance book series I'd like to get to eventually is the Tempting Monster series by Catherine Moon. Another author I recently met, I got this book signed by them, personalized by them, and they wrote this message saying, monsters make the best book boyfriends. And you know what? I've mentioned this before. I'll say it again. I can't disagree with that, but this book series is quite different from the other book series that I've mentioned because this happens to be a monster why choose situation where the protagonist is human but all of her love interests I believe are some kind of monster or paranormal creature and I have been hearing great things from friends about the series and they've been telling me that I really need to read it and they haven't spoiled much. All I know about it is that it's a monster why choose series. I will get to this one eventually. <laughs> I just know that I need to because everyone is pressuring me to do so. I feel like I've been bullied into reading this series, but like in a good way, you know? Also, I really love this cover, and I love the covers in the series as well. And there are some other book series that I would like to read by Catherine Moon, but I'd kind of like to start off with this one, not just because it's like her most loved, but because it's like the one that I'm most interested in at the moment. The second last book series that I've put on my Monster Romance TBR is the Deal with a Demon series by Katie Robert. I have read the first book in the series, and that is The Dragon's Bride. I I love and adore The Dragon's Bride. I found it to be absolutely wholesome. Now that I think about it, Alison was totally right when she said that monster romances seem more wholesome than human-human romances in some cases, because I read some of Katie Roberts' other book series, like the Wicked Villain series. I've read her Wicked Villain series, and those romances are like super dark, right? And then I go into The Dragon's Bride expecting this book to be super dark. No, it just so happens to be one of the most wholesome things I've ever read, and I cannot believe that Katie Robert wrote both book series. <laughs> she can do both, and it's incredible. I can kind of expect that the rest of the book series will have some wholesome vibes. It will address some dark topics, because that's what Katie Robert does. I do recall Katie Robert mentioning that while she was writing one of the books in the series, it was taking like a mental toll on her, but it also healed her at the same time. So I'm kind of expecting an incredibly painful healing journey out of one of these books. I don't know whether or not it's The Kraken Sacrifice, or if it's The Gargoyles Captive, or if it's one of the future books in the series, but I also just want to read it for the vibes. And as I've mentioned previously in this video, I haven't read much about Krakens, and I haven't really read much about Gargoyles, and the next two books in the series just so happen to feature those creatures. So I cannot wait to proceed with The Kraken Sacrifice, move on to The Gargoyles Captive, and then read the rest of the books in the series. I will honestly read anything by Katie Robert at this point. And the final monster romance that I have to mention today that I've put on my TBR is the Shades of Sin series by Colette Rhodes. Colette Rhodes is another author I recently met this year, and I have this book signed and personalized. This is Luxuria. This is the first book in the series, and I don't really know what kind of monster this monster is. He's just essentially defined as an X-rated monster. He's known as the King of Shades, and he requires a hunter bride, and she just so happens to be a hunter. So, um, 
they hit it up. I don't know if this is like a hate to love dynamic, if this is like a reluctant bride situation, but I just know based on the monster romance formula, monster romance formula is essentially Beauty and the Beast. If it's gonna give me any Beauty and the Beast vibes, I am pretty sure that everything is gonna work out well between them. I remember going to Rare 2023 and I was standing in the Lenny Sings line and the line volunteer was asking myself and my friend Tyler, have we read the Shades of Sin series? And we said no, but I did pre-order it and she's like, oh my goodness, you need to immediately. It's incredible. Go read it. And so as soon as I got that recommendation, I bumped it higher on my priority list. But as you can see, we're here around five to six months later and I still haven't read it. So I want to read this one at least before next Halloween. So I can let you guys know whether or not I like this monster romance and whether or not it's good. But considering that it got an absolutely glowing review from the line volunteer at Rare, I think it's going to be really good. So I guess it's going to be it for this video today, book lovers. If you happen to stay to the end of the video, leave me the sparkle emoji. And if you happen to enjoy this video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel if you haven't yet already joined the amazing community of book lovers. And also, I have social media. So my tea of books on Twitter and Instagram, and I'm also Goodreads. That's www.goodreads.com slash swizzle. And finally, I'm at TikTok. My tea swizzle on TikTok if you want to follow me there for some bookish content. I love you, book lovers, and I will see you later. Peace. Mm -hmm. How did I win half when I flipped it in a double?